I spent the last month doing a deep dive into making 3D printing filament from plastic bottles. And here's everything you need to know about the process. In this video, I'll be using the all-in-one PET filament maker from Sustainable Design Studio, but there are plenty of DIY alternatives out there. First off, bottles are made of PET, or polyethylene terephthalate. It shares similar properties with the popular 3D printing material, PETG. The G in PETG stands for glycol, an additive that helps the filament extrude more evenly. You can verify that your bottles are made of PET by checking the recycling symbol on the bottle. It usually lists the material. Before we get started, let's remove all the labels and any leftover residue. I tried a handful of solvents to remove any label residue, but goof off seemed to work the best. Now we need to cut the bottle into even strips, but first we have to get rid of any ridges or embossed logos. There's a few ways to do this, but I found the following method to be the most effective. I added a tire valve to a bottle cap and used a bike pump to add just a little bit of pressure. This helps prevent the bottle from shrinking or collapsing. Then I held it over my stove burner, turning it constantly. After about a minute, the ridges were smoothed out. Once the bottle cools, you can release the pressure slowly. With the bottle nice and smooth, we can cut off the bottom. A utility knife works well for this, and you can clean up the edge with scissors for a nice even cut. Then cut a small tail to feed into your bottle cutter. The width of the strip is crucial and depends on the thickness of the bottle. The PET filament maker reshapes the strip into a tube, so ideally we want enough material to create a full hollow tube. Too much material can jam the extruder, and too little will result in filament that looks like this, making it harder for your 3D printer's extruder to grab. After measuring the bottle thickness with calipers, you can refer to the chart on the Sustainable Design Studio website. Set your filament cutter using spacers. Feed the bottle tail into it. Pulling the strip through the cutter can be tricky at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually super satisfying. Now we can feed the pointy end of our PET strip into the extruder nozzle of the filament maker. I found it easier to do this with the heat turned off. Once it's through, power up the machine and let the hot end reach the appropriate temperature. 210 seems to be the sweet spot here. Pull enough filament through to attach it to the take-up spool. Once secured, use the feed rate knob to start pulling the filament. I found there's a sweet spot with the speed, too fast and the filament looks rough, but when it's just right, you get smooth, glassy filament.
While that's extruding, let's talk about one of the biggest challenges I ran into, and that's that not all bottles are created equal. Some, like this four liter distilled water bottle, have really thick walls. Others, like this Perrier bottle, have two layers separated by a film. which I was able to remove and feed both strips into the extruder simultaneously. But standard one and two liter pop bottles are super uniform and I found them to be the easiest to process. Once we've made our filament, we can join it into longer, more usable lengths. This sustainable design studio filament maker came with a filament welder, but I'll be using my Sunlu filament fuser instead. I recommend fusing together strips from the same brand of bottle to avoid variations in flow rate. To get a good weld on the filament, I use the hottest setting on the fuser, and even then, I don't think this is the ideal way to weld this filament, and sustainable design studio actually advises not to use this welder so your mileage may vary. Next, our filament can go into a filament dryer. Because our filament has a hollow core, we need to adjust our flow rate accordingly. 130% or 1.3 is a good starting point, and you can run a flow rate calibration in Orca Slicer to fine tune it. Print settings are going to be a little different from standard PETG here, but Sustainable Design Studio have ready to go profiles for lots of popular 3D printers. I'm using the Elegoo Centauri Carbon, so I'll copy over the recommended settings for the Bamboo Lab P1P, as they're quite similar. Of course, I want to make some color swatch tests for reference, so I printed some tags and used my UV printer to add matching bottle labels. Now I can reference these for future projects. While homemade PET filament isn't perfect, and I wouldn't recommend it for your next Crystal Dragon print, it really shines for functional prints at draft layer heights. Larger layers help minimize the impact of slightly inconsistent extrusion width, while still maintaining strong layer adhesion. The result is some seriously tough parts. Special thanks to Sustainable Design Studio for sending over this cool little filament maker. They've got tons of other great products, so check out the link in the description. As always, thanks for watching and happy printing. <laughs>